morning. My name is David West. I work with Alameda County Vector Control. Before I came to work for Vector Control, I worked in the private pest control industry. I worked in that industry from two, excuse me, from 1988 to 2000. During that time, you know, I made it all the way through the late 80s and the 90s without ever getting a bed bug complaint or call. In 2000, I began to work for the Vector Control Services District and I wouldn't get my first bed bug complaint till 2010. The situation was um, for this complaint, um, this was a senior facility. It had studio apartments and there was an elderly lady that was receiving bites. The lady was in her mid 90s. She also had a family member that lived with her who was much younger. I did an inspection in their apartment. I found no bed bugs. There, was, there were no bed bugs in the niece's bed, the younger lady's bed, and there were no bed bugs in the apartment. But when I pulled back the elderly lady's bedding, and older people a lot of times will sleep with a lot of covers because they stay colder. Well, she had multiple comforters and sheets and blankets on her bed. And as I began to pull back the covers, I found hundreds of bed bugs at all different stages. Um, of course, as I pulled the covers back, they all scattered. Uh, it wound up where that um, I notified management. And management at that time was really unsure of how to go about doing the treatment. At one point, they tried to treat um, a lot of the common areas in that building. Common areas meaning the laundry rooms, the hallways, and the offices. They tried to do that at night. But the residents complained because they said, while we are sleeping, um, they're spraying and we don't like that. We're not comfortable with that. So it wound up where that they took the tenants on an outing. They put them on a, a bus, a big bus, took them on an outing and kept them out all day. And during that day, they fin they did their first treatment, first uh, first one of the first sets of the treatments that they were going to do. So anyway, that's how that first uh, bed bug inspection worked out that I actually did back in 2010. Bed bugs have a goal. They have an, an objective. Um, they are known hitchhikers. They will hitchhike on your clothing. They will get into your, if you have luggage, they will get into that, but they have a goal, and that is survival. And it, their ultimate goal is to get to the area where you sleep at. And it can be in your home, it can be in a motel room, but they have a goal. And uh, their goal is to get in, and our goal is, of course, to stop them and not let them get in. At Vector Control, we receive complaints. We will get a slip of paper in our inbox which is called a request for service. On this request for service we will have the name of the person, the address of the person, their phone number and the complaint that they are calling in about. Um, in this case we're, since we're talking about bed bugs that would be what we would go out and inspect for but once we go out and do the inspection um, we identify what the pest is and once we identify the pest that means the complaint is valid. Um, once we find that, we notify the responsible person. Responsible person can be the landlord, the property manager, or it could be a homeowner. Um, once that person is notified, our goal or what we like to see is that they call a pest control company in to do the service because all that is professional. Some landlords like to do things um, by like going, going to certain stores and picking up products and letting the tenant do it themselves, but our goal is for them to have it professionally done by using pest control. There are certain circumstances where the complaint may not come to us um, the, the regular way. You know, if there's a, a client or a tenant or even a homeowner that has a, a lifestyle that where that they are either so busy or if they're having um, other issues in their life. Uh, it, it may be where if there is a health care worker or a person that does uh, like in-home in type service, it might be where 
that person has to report the complaint to us instead of the client reporting the complaint to us once we receive the complaint it goes pretty much the same we're notified we do our inspection um, we identify what the pest is we contact the responsible person and then the conclusion of that is that they get proper professional treatments there's a saying that goes um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure so yeah, our goal and any pest professional would probably say that um, bed bugs need to be caught early in other words if, if there's signs of them early on if there's signs of them it needs to be reported so that the inspection can be done and they can be identified and then treatments can begin in other words you don't want a bed bug problem to explode and for the population to get out of control so it's important that the signs are noticed early know the signs two types of inspections I'd like to talk about today the first type is visual inspections visual inspections um, of course is is what we do at vector control by doing this inspection we can look at the apartment or the residence or the home and we can look at the amount of bed bugs are in, that are in that particular room or area um, and we can put facts together um, and we can go back to the homeowner or the responsible person and let them know what our findings are and let them know what their next step should be once we do do the inspection and actually find bed bugs then that, that's confirmation that there's an infestation there and it does need to be treated inspections sometimes can be labor intensive in other words you may have to move things especially if it's a low level infestation low level infestation is where you have a great big room and maybe two or three bed bugs that are hiding in it in order to find them you have to kind of dig through everything to locate them the second type of inspection I'd like to talk to you about is inspections that use bed bug sniffing dogs bed bug sniffing dogs are required to be certified they have to have a certain level of training um, if there's a inspection that's been done visually by humans then a lot of times well if that inspection is inconclusive or nothing is found and the people are still saying that something is biting them when a dog comes in he can be much more ac accurate actually up to like 90 percent so they're very effective when uh, visual inspections are inconclusive dogs are also effective when there's there's large apartment complexes and dormitories that need to be inspected dogs also can be expensive if you have a a large number of rooms that need to be uh, checked or inspected sometimes it's it's necessary to have a second dog or sometimes a third dog because sometimes dogs have they have bad days days when they don't feel like working you know days when their attention span is just not there dogs also are not able to inspect necessarily really high places so the the other thing about um, bed bug sniffing dogs is that they are trained by a master trainer the master trainer is a, a trainer that trains police dogs and these dogs can be fairly fairly expensive I, I've heard of them costing um, in the area of, of ten thousand dollars and of course when you have this type of inspection that cost is in so many ways passed on to you personal protection is very important when doing a bed bug inspection if you look at the upper left corner you see a person that is wearing a Tyvek suit at vector control we wear Tyvek suits um, there's certain situations where you're gonna come in contact with people's personal items their sheets uh, possibly that possibly their clothing and being being covered up is a good way to protect yourself you can also see um, that one slide where the person has jeans on and they're wearing boot they're wearing booties and that's to protect your shoes um, the bottom left corner you see the person of course has gloves on 
when I do a bed bug inspection and I know for that day that I'm gonna have to do one I, I come to work with lighter clothing on uh, if you look the young lady has on as you can see a bright orange shirt which is light and her slacks are light so that's uh, a first level of of uh, defense is to have that type of light clothing on that way if, if a bed bug does happen to get on you you'll be able to spot it but it's always recommended if necessary to put on a Tavex suit to offer complete protection there are certain tools that we take in when we do an inspection um, flashlight of course is to look into into dark places cracks and crevices where bed bugs may be hiding the magnifying glass is used just to identify the real early stages or maybe identify eggs that um, are tucked away in an area where they're hard to see tweezers of course are used to to pick up samples of bed bugs and they can be placed in a vial filled with alcohol we bring those back to our our, um, our office and our biologist looks at them for ID purposes um, the tape is tape is basically used to um, sometimes to wrap um, around your sleeves uh, where your sleeves and your gloves meet just to give you better protection and tape can also be used to wrap around your ankles where your booties meet and your Tyvek suit meet, meets and that also gives you better protection there are certain tools that at vector control that we take in when we do a bed bug inspection um, at the top of the list you see a flashlight of course a flashlight is used to to uh, shine into cracks and crevices where bed bugs may be hiding at uh, you also see tweezers tweezers are used to pick up samples of bed bugs and they're put in a vial that has alcohol in it um, alcohol um, can also be used to put on cotton balls uh, and the cotton balls can be wiped over uh, stains on a mattress if it comes up rust colored then we know that that is from the bed bugs magnifying glass is used to to see the bed bugs at the smaller stages so they can be easier easily identified Leatherman tool as you know has um, many it's one tool that has many things on it flathead screwdriver Phillips head screwdriver it may have pliers on it, it may have small knives on it that's useful in case we have to take a bed frame apart or take a screw out a camera is also useful to take pictures of the bed bugs um, where they're found at and sometimes uh, just to take a picture of the room the conditions of the room we may want to uh, show the landlord um, if the landlord hasn't been able to get in we can take that picture by using that camera and as you know a picture says a thousand words the tape is used to secure the Tyvek suit where um, where it comes down to your hands to make sure that the gloves are the gloves and the suit are are actually sealed so nothing can get in around your hands and the tape can also be used um, at the base of the Tyvek suit and you have your booties on and you tape around the base of the suit so that the booties and all that whole area is is properly sealed so no bed bugs get on you it's important that you know bed bug hiding spots right here you see well I call them the big three you look at the 22.4 which uh, of course is the mattress then you look at the 34.6 which is the box spring and then you look at the the, the frame and headboard I call all those the big the big three these are the areas where bed bugs are going to be because they want to be as close to their host as possible. The last slide we looked at the pie chart. Now let's take a look at how that looks in a regular room. Uh, if you look at the green area, as you can see, that's where 70% of the bed bugs are going to be. And of course, that's because they're near their host. The bed frame, headboard, the mattress, the box spring, and then next to it you also see a um, small nightstand. So that's the, that's the main area. And then you push out a little further to the yellow area. Um, those are the secondary harborages. They go into those secondary harborages if, <clears throat> for example, the population has gotten really high and they start to spread further. Um, it could be that uh, there's been some treatments in that room that were done improperly and that's caused them to scatter. 
but in any case those are the second that's the secondary area and of course if you look at the the way out areas on um, the seven percent area those are the areas that are are farthest away and if they've been pushed to those areas that infestation is definitely out of control one type of a um, inspection that is is difficult to detect is a low infestation because you have a room um, there's been complaints about bites and it's just a few bed bugs in there so you inspect and you have to take everything basically apart in the room so at the top left you see the room as it is as you enter and then at the bottom right you see that the room has been completely taken apart and notice the pictures are also the pictures are off the walls so this is a room a great big room that has just a few bed bugs in it in order to find them you have to literally take that room apart this is a closer look um, at what can be found during an, an inspection if you look on the mattress you see the spots that are rusty colored those are actually blood spots in other words the bed bug fed and as it walked away um, it dropped blood because it was engorged with blood if you look further down where the seam is you see the black spots those are fecal stains um, and then of course you look further down you see the the cluster of bed bugs they're at different stages um, but it is a cluster. This is a, a heavy infestation. This is, an inf this is an infestation that never should have got this far out of hand. And I've never smelled it before, but I've been told that when there's a really heavy infestation that they have like an odor, a Swedish, kind of a sweet smelling odor. This is another example of um, bed bugs feeding. And of course they um, have exc excreted blood. Um, and they've done their business also and this is on a sheet so um, this is an, another picture just to get you uh, to let you visually see what we would see during an inspection this is an, a picture another picture of a heavy infestation um, again you see the bed bugs clustered together you see um, bed bugs at different stages you see eggs you see casts cast skins you see a little bit of everything in this picture again this person should be um, should be wearing gloves but I guess they just took them out off for some reason this is another picture of a heavily infested area this can be um, either a a, uh, a cushion that's on a, a couch or it could be a mattress but again they're congregated you can see all the different stages um, the person that sleeps on this couch or bed is being severely chewed up lots of times when I run into these situations I will have a a spray bottle a lot of times with alcohol in it and I will spray spray them um, in order to kill them and that'll give that that tenant or occupant some some relief it'll give them some immediate relief a lot of times um, when a landlord finds out that he has to hire a pest control sometimes it takes a while to get the appointment but by spraying them it does give some faster relief the other thing that can be done is is that um, sometimes a vacuum can be used to to vacuum them up and uh, you know cut the population down and give the person some relief all these are potential secondary harborage areas these are other areas that the bed bugs can can go into of course the closer these items are especially the dresser the nightstand the table and the chair the closer they are to that primary area the more likely that there'll be bed bugs there but if you look at the dresser um, and then you look at the the nightstand you notice the drawers are out bed bugs can really get in there and infest they can get in a person's clothing they can also get in the tracks that the drawer slides on and they can also get under under things that nightstand is actually uh, turned over on its side they can get in the screws around table legs um, all these areas need to be to be inspected if you look also at the carpet and baseboard areas you can see where the carpets pull back 
the carpet tacks are exposed this is a nice a favorite area for bed bugs to hide also if you look where the paint a lot of times where a paint cracks or peels off a wall this also provides a hiding place for bed bugs these are the areas that that must be treated um, well not treated but they need to be inspected to see if there's treatment needed in those areas if you look at these areas on um, the top right you see a picture frame bed bugs can actually go to those areas a lot of times if it's a, a heavy infestation they can spread uh, to an area uh, like the picture frame um, actually all these places on there when the infestation gets extremely heavy they can spread to those areas the smoke detector the wall outlets a lot of times uh, I mean this is you have to put the facts together to find out what's going on but at a wall outlet or an electrical outlet or a light switch um, you have to figure are these bed bugs that are coming from an adjacent room or apartment uh, are they traveling along the lines and coming into the room that you're inspecting or have they been pushed to those areas um, from overpopulation or from maybe somebody doing improper treatments like fogging the other thing that bed bugs will do is they will cluster on the ceiling. A lot of times, if a person has their bed up against the wall, um, sometimes people have their bed, you know, of course the the headboard's against the wall, but sometimes they have it pushed against the wall to where the sides of the the side one one of the sides of the bed is against the wall. Bed bugs will get up on the ceiling between the ceiling and the wall, and they will cluster there and they will come down and feed on the person and then go back up the wall and stay up around the ceiling area. A lot of times when you see this you see areas on the wall where people have smashed bed bugs. There's all kind of stains where they've taken their finger and smushed them and there's like blood little small areas of blood all over the wall. Inspections will, will never be perfect. There's so many situations and circumstances that you run into when you're inspecting. Um, at Vector Control, um, I've actually seen where um, there are, are tenants, just over and over I've seen, you know, you have an apartment complex and you have a tenant that and they move in, they take possession of the unit, and once they move in, um, they act like they own it. They will not let anybody come in. Uh, if a pest control person, let's say, comes out every month and does treatments on the, let's say, the second Tuesday, every second Tuesday this person is never available they never open the door they never cooperate and a lot of times when you actually are able to enter finally enter that unit you would be surprised at at the condition that unit is in inspections can always be challenging some inspections are easier than others uh, if you look at this apartment you can see that it's it's neat um, you know the couch in that area is neat and maintained and on the right picture the shelves and you know everything the books and everything is in order this is um, well an inspector's worst nightmare this is definitely a challenging situation to inspect um, there is clutter there's a lot of items that are there a lot of times when you talk to occupants or tenants and you tell them that they need to 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 get rid of some of the stuff they have because bed bugs can get in those things and hide uh, sometimes they will tell you that they've already gotten rid of their their stuff they've gotten rid of a lot of stuff already this is a situation where at vector control we probably would wear a Tyvek suit in we would wear our our booties gloves we would fully suit up because in this situation you're coming in contact with just all kind of personal items the next thing I'd like to talk to you about are monitoring devices. If you, at Vector Control, if we inspect a unit, there's been a complaint about bites. We inspect the unit, not able to find anything. One of the recommendations that we might make is, is that they put monitors in. And we're going to talk a little bit, well, the next slides, we're going to talk about type, different types of monitors. Um, but monitors are useful uh, also to detect a complaint or for pre-complaint detection. In other words, before there's ever a complaint, 
uh, a landlord that's really proactive can put monitors out and find out if anything uh, is in his his unit that he may not have rented yet um, also if a room is extremely cluttered monitors are also useful they can also track progress after treatment is done after a pest control man's been out done his treatment and you want to know how successful that treatment is monitors can be placed out and they they are like report cards they'll report anything that is moving around in that room the drawbacks to monitors some of the drawbacks to monitors are that if it's a low level infestation and in other words if it's not a lot of bed bugs moving around then there won't be much for the monitors to pick up and if it does pick them up sometimes it's going to take um, a while it'll take some time days or maybe even week, weeks to pick them up depending on the type of monitor that you get um, they can be expensive there's different types of monitors there's active monitors and there's passive monitors active monitors use uh, attractants such as co2 or they may use heat um, of course that type will be the more expensive for type the passive type of monitors uh, really don't use anything to attract bed bugs to them just real quickly taking a look at some of the some of the monitors and there's a lot of them out there on the market um, the top left corner you see a monitor that uses uh, actually a heat device and towards the bottom you see um, some that use glue uh, the top one the very top right one uh, that's a type of monitor that would use uh, I believe CO2 and of course the bottom right one is a clam up interceptor type monitor and we're going to look at, at these closer on the following slides this is a clam up interceptor trap this is a passive trap. Um, in other words, it doesn't use heat, doesn't use CO2 to attract bed bugs. The way this works is the legs of a bed are placed actually in the center well of the trap. There's a center well and there's an outer pitfall area. Um, in this trap, there's talc powder or baby powder that's placed in there. If a bed bug crawls down off the legs of this bed it gets into the center well area which is slippery just the plastic alone is slippery but when he gets in the powder it makes it even slipperier so he can't climb out the powder also suffocates him if a bed bug is walking on the floor and he decides he wants to get on the bed and go up on the bed and have a meal he'll crawl up on that in that outer pitfall and again the plastic is slippery and the powder will get on him and it'll suffocate him so he can't go any further he's trapped and he'll he'll die right in those areas um, when using this type of trap you want to make sure that the bedding does not touch the floor and you want to make sure the headboard doesn't touch the wall because bed bugs will just if they can't get up on the legs they'll find another area they'll use the bedding and the headboard and they'll get access to the bed basically any way that they can the next station I want to talk about is a pack tight passive station. I want to emphasize the word passive. It doesn't use heat. It doesn't use CO2. <clears throat> this is a trap that is um, actually placed uh, it's pla it's placed by a bed or a couch. And as you can see, uh, it has a, a white area that's like a landing area. And behind the landing area, is some openings that are in corrugated cardboard so what a bed bug does is he feeds once he feeds he not he but he or she feeds they they want to um, go a place and rest so they're attracted to that dark space in the corrugated cardboard area so they'll climb up on the landing area they'll poop and do their business and then they'll go inside the little openings and they'll sleep and they're they're detected by the business that they leave on the white the white landing area and this is again a, a passive type trap and no chemicals or anything it's just uh, a situation that bed bugs like to get into after they eat bug alert active monitor is active and it uses a heat pack if you look at it it's it's like a, a it's a case um, it has a top and it has a bottom um, you can see 
the red heat packs at the bottom. These heat packs they rest on top of some little like uh, like spikes. Um, underneath these spikes is a glue tray. So bed bugs are you, well you snap the trap together bed bugs are attracted to it because it's warm once they crawl into that area they're stuck on the glue traps so this is another way to detect their presence um, this is effective in a, in a room that is un, unoccupied the last type of monitor I like to talk about is a beacon co2 active monitor and again it's active because it uses co2 this is useful um, in rooms that are vacant it attracts bed bugs in minutes because of the CO2. It can also be used to to find out um, if a treatment has been effective. Pest control man's been in, he's done his service. You don't know how effective the treatment was even though dead bed bugs have been found. Well this this trap can definitely attract whatever's in there. Um, if, if this is a an apartment or a home that's going to be sold or rented just having this type of trap in there will tell you if there are bed bugs present. So it's a very, very effective trap. A lot of times I'll recommend to uh, a property manager or a landlord if they have uh, many properties or, or a very large property to purchase one of these, to purchase not one but maybe have a few on hand because they're an excellent tool to make sure that, that um, the, the apartments they rent to make sure they don't have anything in them as far as bed bugs are concerned. In conclusion, in conclusion, um, at Vector Control and and uh, most people that do inspections would recommend that uh, if an inspection is done, that's always done by a professional. Monitors also are very useful in detecting the presence of bed bugs. Before complaints ever generated, monitors can save uh, a landlord or or uh, a homeowner um, a lot of grief because if they detect it early, early detection is always best. If it's detected early, the population will never get out of control. And last, if you suspect that you have bed bugs and there's been a person that's receiving bites. Um, and you're a resident of Alameda County, you can contact Vector Control and we will come out and do an inspection for you.